In the digital realm of video games or in airsoft, setting up your weapon the way you like it can make a big difference when it comes to the firefight. Now, today, that is the exact reason why we're going to be talking about M4s. In Airsoft, for the guys who don't play Airsoft that are watching this video, the M4 is the most popular weapon system. And although in real life, the AK is actually the most popular weapon system in the world, in Airsoft, it's the M4. And the reason why is that the Airsoft M4 is just so well manufactured in Airsoft right now that there's so many. I mean, there's probably over a thousand different types of M4s you can buy, and most of them are compatible with each other in terms of their parts. So if you get a, a motor out of one M4 and plop it into another, it'll most likely work, especially for the most popular brands out there. But some people kind of look at M4s like the casuals gun, like the gun that everybody has, because 70% of airsofters, if you go to an event, will have some sort of M4 in some way or another. And so a lot of airsoft companies are branching out from the standard looking M4 and trying to get a little more artistic or modified style to their weapon, trying to make them a little bit more customized and a more modified look for the average player. And this is where the EMG Warthog comes in. This is a rifle sent to me by the guys over at Evike Airsoft. They wanted me to check out this gun to Tell you guys what I think about it and also go shooting with it a little bit. This gun's most iconic thing that makes it different from your standard M4 is that muzzle. This is an amplifier and you might think that airsoft guns are kind of quiet, they sound a little bit more electric and they just make a shik shik sound every time you fire it. <laughs> But this sort of amplifier will actually make the gun considerably louder. I would say twice the, the volume as a standard Airsoft M4. It makes a very loud clap sound that's a lot different if you're getting shot at by one of these. And although this isn't portrayed very well in the GoPro footage, it is considerably louder, especially when indoors when firing at a target. So if you wanted to scare the enemy with the sound of the rifle by itself, this Warthog, similar to an A-10 Warthog, is very, very loud. And if you're shooting someone within like five feet, it's going to scare them <laughs> as well as hurt them. It also comes with a super smooth, and I really like this, M-Lock rail. Uh, the M-Lock rail looks very clean. It's not too futuristic. It's not too rugged either. It's right in the middle of just a sleek looking M4 type of look. I, I really am starting to like M-Lock rails because they are just smooth. I can wear them without gloves and not cut my hands if I'm running, let's say, a two-day operation. And they're also very thin and lightweight. If you have a quad rail on the front of your gun, that can add a lot of weight, especially if it's like a, let's say, a Daniel Defense, like, 12-inch rail. Having something like a very lightweight M-Lock rail with a small, let's say, a Magpul angled foregrip on the bottom is going to be extremely lightweight, and that's going to make it where your rifle isn't so heavy after a long duration of fighting. Now we go to the center of the gun. We have a customized receiver. The upper is that angled kind of look that we see in most guns that I've kind of reviewed recently, the Crytac as well as the uh, Classic Army Nemesis. The lower receiver has this Warthog design that I am not a big fan of. I usually am just a guy who likes the simple M4 design down there. And if the magwell is flared so it's a little bit easier to insert a magazine, that's good with me. But in my opinion, I'm not a guy who would go and buy a rifle that has a design like this on it. I would buy a variant that is just simplified. The gun also has a very functional stock as well. It collapses like a normal collapsible stock, but it is kind of bulky in my opinion. But that bulk does come with some extra functionality in that it can hold more batteries. This can hold up to, I would say, 4,000 milliamp sort of batteries. You could probably fit them and smush them in there. And what that does is that if you're on a, let's say, a long duration operation, you're going for 48 hours or so, um, and you're shooting a lot of rounds, you're using a lot of that energy, then what you can do is you don't have to have batteries in your rucksack or batteries in anywhere else on your gear, on your person, you can just have them all jam-packed into that stock, so all you have to do is just change the wiring whenever one battery runs out, which is really nice. Well, the trigger response is actually really good. I was able to get very quick shots off um, at some people that were, like, moving targets and such during my gameplay, as well as the full auto capability. The, the rate of fire is awesome, and you can change the trigger from full auto to three-round burst if you prefer, so you can have a more realistic roll, or if you just like three-round burst for some reason, then you can go to that, but I'm, I'm a full auto guy. I like to spray people sometimes. But one thing that really jumped out at me was the accuracy of this weapon. I've not really had a gun this accurate in a long time. I was able to hit targets at 180 feet to about 200 feet actually rather easily. And the shots you see here on this footage are at 180 feet um, just with 0.28 BBs. And that thing was shooting at I think a 360 FPS with 0.28. So it was going pretty fast for a heavier type of BB. 
So although this gun looks like a close quarters gun, it actually has some pretty good accuracy that can reach out to ranges of 200 feet uh, pretty effectively. I mean, in this footage here, I didn't even have the ACOG uh, zeroed into the gun. So I was actually aiming like two shoulder widths away from everybody at all times. So guys, enjoy the non-zeroed ACOG scope gameplay. I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Got one. Got one. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah. Got him. Nice. Oh my god. <laughs> it's hitting all above me. Gotcha. Yep, I see the moving up. Just got one. Whew. Oh, got him. <laughs> Dang. I don't think he knew where I was. <laughs> yeah, this is a great angle. I can just peek only my gun in my face. I don't think that's really easy to see. The white wall the before the bush? I got him. I got him. Out, we're in the sun. Nice kill. Stay low. Stay low. Are you both hit? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> There's one right in front of me right now in these bushes. He moved back. I saw that shine or whatever that was. What's up? Okay. That's hostile. He's firing at me. I'm in cover. Gosh, dang, that was close. John, 
Be here, John. They're across the road from me and probably in the same direction you're heading too. Hit, hit, hit. Dead, dead, dead. <laughs> 